Hey everyone, this is Dar Snowbit here. Sorry for making you guys wait so long, but I'm, but hopefully the wait is worth it for you guys. This is my review on the first of the prequels, Star Wars The Phantom Menace. Of course, the edition I have for this film on Blu-ray is the Steel Case Edition. It's pretty cool. Um, this is a movie that a lot of Star Wars fans, even those who are Expanded Universe fans, have the tendency to shit on. Now, there are legitimate criticisms for this film. Is it the worst Star Wars movie? Not by a long shot. Do I think it's a bad movie? Absolutely not. If you're one of those people who are prequel haters, the obnoxious original trilogy fanboys, you're not going to get your one millionth review on the prequels. And no, you giving me a link to that fucking obnoxious asshole picket on why the prequels are bad is not going to convince me. I'm not going to waste 30 fucking hours when I could watch these movies for myself and judge. I never hated this movie, so do not expect me to tr trash it like your gods do. I'm sorry, people, but this is what it comes to when you review the prequels. If you don't review them, you know, in the way some people expect, you'll get fucking a bunch of hate freaking comments. If you review it fairly, you'll also get hate comments. So I'm going to review these fairly. The Phantom Menace. There's a lot of hype behind this movie. Arguably, probably more hype than any Star Wars movie to date. Even more than Force Awakens. Because at the time this movie came out, it was 16 years after Return of the Jedi. Now, at this point, no one was expecting another Star Wars movie until George Lucas announced more. And in 1999, fans who who were kid children when they watched Return of the Jedi were now in their mid-20s to their early 30s, watched The Phantom Menace. Of course, there's those like myself who, who were like kids when we watched this movie. So some of our perspectives may be different. Now, despite what people want to make you believe, this movie was not hated when it first came out. In fact, there's evidence to prove that this movie wasn't hated. Hell, I'll show some video footage if you would like, if, if you would like me to in, you know, in the future, to prove that The Phantom Menace wasn't hated like prequel haters want to make you believe. And another thing... Um, there were a lot more sets built for this movie than all the original movies combined. I mean, you have to be blind not to see it. I mean, before, you know, you know, Revenge of the Sith and Attack of the Clones, this movie had more variety of locations than any Star Wars movie up until this point. And you could tell there was a lot of attention put into detail. You know, each area in the in this film look different than anything you saw in the previous movies. And at the time this movie was being made, the advancements of technology, you know, CGI, was to the point where George Lucas could do the story that he wanted to do. I don't think this movie would have been possible if he made it in the 80s. And... Even though there's problems in this film, I do believe that George Lucas did pretty good for what he had to work with. Any other director would could have done much worse than George Lucas. Um, I, don't worry, I will get to the negatives at some point, to be fair. The thing I love about this movie is it felt like... I'm speaking from experience when I was a kid watching this. I was going back into the galaxy far, far away. I felt like I was re myself with an old friend. Of course, this time, it wasn't Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, and Leia. It was brand new characters. Well, not really new, but you had characters like Padme Amidala, Obi-Wan Kenobi, who, he wasn't, he, there really is much much to him in the original trilogy. There was characters like Qui-Gon Jinn in, the, in, the, in this movie, an obnoxious, annoying fucking Jar Jar Pinks. I mean, each character in this film had a purpose, and unlike The Force Awakens, yes, I'm gonna, I'm not, don't, get used to me taking a shot at the sequels. 
if you took any character out of this movie, it would have changed a lot. Um, including Qui-Gon Jinn, honestly. Even though there is an argument to be made that there, that there is a problem on who the protagonist in this movie is, I do believe there is three protagonists in this movie. You have Anakin, Padme, and Qui-Gon Jinn. And Obi-Wan is a side character. Which I don't have a problem with that, to be honest. Uh, and th despite what Pickett wants to tell you, Anakin does not appear 45 minutes into the movie. He appears 32. I checked when I watched it th you know, this time. The, this movie, you know, there's there's some moments I actually enjoy. I'm probably one of the few people that actually enjoyed the pod racing. I felt it was really entertaining. And one thing about this film that the other films didn't do is we saw another side of the galaxy that we haven't seen before on screen. Every other side of the galaxy we, we saw was in expanded universe material. But this was the first time we get to see another side on screen. And I'll mention this, you know, maybe this has nothing to do with the movie, but for Expanded Universe fans, you know, you guys know this. The name Coruscant came from the novel Heir to Empire. And George Lucas originally was going to name it something else until George Lucas found out that they already had a name for this planet. Go figure. But the EU has nothing to do with this. It. It's just some, you know, some of, the, some of the Easter eggs, you know, that you notice... Force speed, which was a force power in the expanded universe, which we, we saw on screen. The double-bladed lightsaber with Darth Maul, that was something that was first introduced in a Star Wars comic. I mean, it was pretty cool to see some of this stuff from, you know, the supplemental materials, you know, on screen. And that was cool, honestly. Now, the casting, you know, Lehman Neeson did a great job as Qui-Gon Jinn. I think he, he could have been utilized better, in my opinion. But I felt like Lehman Neeson was great, honestly, for the part. Natalie Portman, I thought, was, was great as Padme. Um, despite what people want to say, I think, I think Jake Lloyd did pretty good as Anakin. I mean, I think the way the fans treated him was terrible. But that's, that's a subject for another, for I could do it another video. I, then again, I'm probably not going to. I then um, Jar the guy who did Jar Jar, he was okay. I mean, Jar Jar was pretty fucking annoying, so I'm not gonna talk about that. Of course, the actor that plays City, as I don't remember his name at the, the top of my head at this moment, but he was great as Palpatine. It's just I think um, the casting was pretty good for this movie, honestly. The only thing I could say that's negative, honestly, these of of the casting is you know Jake Lloyd. I mean. Nothing against the kid personally. I mean, he was, he did good with the material that was given to him, and some of his his dialogue just doesn't work. Same thing with Padme. Now I'm gonna, just gonna talk about the good aspects of the film and the bad. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go over to the bad first because I don't want to take too long trashing this, this some of the bad stuff. I think the bad thing about, about this movie is definitely. Jar Jar Binks. This is an obvious thing. I think I can't name a single Star Wars fan that doesn't hate this character that groaned every time he, he was on screen. And hit Jar Jar Binks is a lot of the reason why. Episode 1 isn't my top 3 Star Wars movies because... No, episode 1. Because Jar Jar Binks is so damn obnoxious and annoying that... No. No, no, no. He just felt like a character that felt that he felt like a character that belongs in a Disney movie and not a Star Wars movie. Oh God. Luckily, George Lucas listened and reduced his role in Episode Two and Three. Yeah, but Jar Jar Binks was was terrible. He isn't as big of a part of the movie like the original trilogy fanboys will make you believe. But I will admit he is a terrible character. And his scenes are awful. I, dr I dread any scene that he's in. But I don't let him, this aspect ruin the movie. Now there's some accusations that of, of racism with, with Jar Jar Binks and 
those LA guys with the trade preparation. I don't see it. We're in a galaxy far, far away. Do you expect everyone to have the same kind of accent, English or, you know, American? It makes sense you'd have characters with a variety of different accents. I mean, I don't see anything racist about those Trade Federation guys. I don't, honestly, that's just me personally. We're in a fucking galaxy, a huge one. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't have characters that kind of sound like that. I think people are are just nitpicking just for the sake of nitpicking. Speaking of, of that, I'll, I'll talk about that later. Um, I think the actor that played Darth Maul was wasted. I think, yo, know, I don't I don't know 100%, but there's some dialogue that he did that was never used in the movie, and I felt like a little bit more Darth Maul would have done good because I think this actor did a great job with the character. Even though I love the character of Darth Maul, but that's another criticism. Liam Neeson, I felt, could have been utilized better in this movie. Same thing with Edgar McGregor, which I forgot to mention for, for the casting. I think he could have been utilized better. Um, Anakin, I think being a kid was a mistake, in my opinion. If there's one thing I would have changed that would have not drastically changed the story, because I have no problem with the story of, of the plot of, of episode one, I would have made Anakin at least, I would have aged him up at least, you know, six to seven years. So he's at least like 15 to 16. Honestly, if there's one thing I would have changed, because I felt like Anakin was, in my opinion, he was too young. And that way, Anakin and Padme would have been closer in age, not a five, like it's maybe a two to three year age gap instead of five. And I would have aged Padme probably by two years or, or three, because I felt like the, the characters were too young. In my opinion, even though there's there's been... Queens throughout history that were younger than, than Padme Amidala was, I felt like it would have been better if she was aged up a bit. It's hard to believe a 14-year-old girl is, you know, a queen of a planet. I'm sorry. that That's just me nitpicking. That's just one of the things I would have changed. And no, I, would, I still would have kept Darth Maul dead, which that's a video that I'll do on another time about how, why I think arriving Darth Maul was a mistake. Um, now the good. Yeah, you think, I'm not going to go around listing everything that was bad, because I a lot of stuff that people criticize about episode one is nitpicking at best. Um, I felt the soundtrack was amazing for this movie. I, I think episode one, which is what's this one thing that prequel hating people never bring up is how great John Williams' music was. It was amazing. Uh, honestly, this is probably the best soundtrack, you know, at the, that was done at the time, you know, since Empire Strikes Back. You know, there's just so many iconic themes in here, you know, like Anakin's theme, the Duel of Fates, which was amazing. You just, of course, there's a few other pieces of music that was great in, in The Phantom Menace that, that the original trilogy fanboys will never acknowledge. It's still a great piece of music, and, it, and it's still memorable, honestly. You want to look up you know, music that a lot of people like in Star Wars? Just look up any, uh, music from in the prequels. A lot of it will, will be over the original trilogy, with the exception of Yoda's theme and Darth Vader's. Now, other things I liked about episode one, you know, I, I like the lightsaber duel between Darth Maul and Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan. I thought it was great, despite what original trilogy fanboys like Pickett want to tell you. And no, the fight wasn't boring. You're really going to tell me a lightsaber duel in episode four, which was, which is poorly choreographed, in my opinion, didn't even feel like real people using swords. This felt like a bunch of old men swinging swords like this. It was much more engaging and interesting watching the lightsaber duel in episode one. I think the Darth Maul versus Qui-Gon Obi-Wan fight is one of the best fight scenes ever put on film. 
I mean, at the time, you didn't see two Jedi and Sith duke it out on, on film at this point. In my opinion, it's the best lightsaber duel to this day. And almost 20 years later, we have yet to have a lightsaber duel that, that even comes close to that caliber. And I know some of you are going to bring up, oh, but the lightsaber duel, Return of the Jedi, is so emotional, blah, 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 blah. Who gives a fuck, honestly, about that? It was an awesome-looking fight. It was well choreographed. The music that was playing in the background was really good. And you know what? I'm this is coming from someone that en that enjoys seeing martial arts. They enjoy seeing you know seeing sword fighting. I love seeing that. And to see Jedi and Sith utilizing the Force and all that other shit was awesome. Some of the shit you see was only seen in novels and comics. To see that on screen was awesome. Honestly, to have everything be like the original trilogy is what made what makes Star Wars these days boring to begin with. And people to this this day and age would would yawn, bored if they had a fight exactly like the the original trilogy. It would be seen as a rehash. George Lucas had to do something different. The up the ante. And uh, and I will always defend Duel of Fate. I I think it's a great lightsaber duel. In my opinion, the best of the whole series, and there's nothing anyone says that'll tell me it isn't. Other good things, I, I, li I like the spaceship battle at the end of the movie. I think it's really good. It's fast-paced, and of course it's no Return of the Jedi or, or Yavin 4, but I still enjoyed the battle. It, you know, it looks really cool. The only thing I don't like, which is Anakin basically destroying the... Starship by accident, but then again, how? what other way were you going to end that? I'll get to the story in a bit. I'm just talking about things I liked and disliked. Um, other other things I liked, um, I liked how there's some references and Easter eggs to other, you know, to expanded universe materials, like I told you, like Force Speed and the name Coruscant. And there's an Easter egg, if you're paying attention, of E.T., and a ship from Star Trek, if you're paying close attention to this, to this movie. And some extra characters that would have later appear in expanded ma material, such as TV shows or books and comics, like Era Secura and Quinlan Boss. But you have to pay close enough attention. I love the pod race. I felt it was r really intense. It was something different. We haven't seen something like that before in Star Wars. And like I said before earlier, we saw a different side of the Star Wars universe. Pod racing, we had something like it in the expanded universe. And we never saw that on screen. And to see that was really cool. I mean, it was an entertaining part of the movie. And and I don't care if people say, oh, you actually, I can't believe you were entertained by that. Hey, I'm listing things I like. Of course, I think I forgot a few other things. But yeah, there's a lot I like about this movie. And there's... And there's a, quite a bit I don't like. But The Phantom Menace is far from the bad film that a lot of people betray it as. And why is this review longer than normal? Because I feel like this movie deserves to be you know, defended. Because I don't think it's nearly as bad as a lot of people claim it is. Now, as for the politics for this film, which I'm going to talk about here. It doesn't overtake you know, the plot of the movie. And let's be honest here, people. The prequels are about the fall of a, of a democracy. That's what it's about, honestly. It, and the, the prequels have far more to them than the original trilogy in terms of, of its story. Do I think it's as good as the original trilogy? I'll get to that in another video. But... I think it, it was a great addition to the Star Wars universe. And it and we saw sides we never seen before, the politics, you know, the we we saw some stuff regarding slavery, the 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 pod racing, which is what we said we haven't seen before. We saw the Jedi, what they were about. And I, I know some people are gonna talk about but what do you, what about the Metachlorians? Who gives a fuck about Metachlorians, people? I can't believe people made such a big deal about Metachlorians back, even back then. I mean, seriously, how did it take away the magic of the Force? 
I never saw that. I felt like it's just people nitpicking just for the sake of nitpicking. I mean, I don't feel like it took away the magic of the Force. I felt like it showed what was wrong with the Jedi at that point. The Jedi, like the Republic, are corrupt. They've, they've grown arrogant. And they have such a disconnect from the Force, which is why they're blind. That, that their, their enemy is right in front of them because they believe in things like Metachalorians. That's how I interpret it anyway. Uh, as a film on its own, I think The Phantom Menace is good. It isn't great. It's good. It's severely underrated. Yes, there's some stuff you could pick apart, like Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, that was terrible. I hate Jar Jar. Young Anakin. Yeah, you could make an argument that Young Anakin was the weak part of the movie, but like I said, I... What they could have done to fix it is age Anakin a few years. Um, of course, one thing I'm probably going to bring up too, which I'm, I'll probably bring it up more in Attack of the Clones, we actually had a strong female character in this movie. Unlike Force Awakens. And some of you people are like, oh, Padme, a strong character? Are you kidding me? Think, think about it. You know, Padme had to, you know, on her own, not really on her own, but you get what I'm meaning. She is a strong female character in this movie. She does things that, that prove it. She's a leader of a planet. She devised a plan to take out the, the, the Trade Federation to take back her home world. And she does all of this without depending on a man to save her. And she's not all powerful. She doesn't have force power. She doesn't beat everyone like Rey does. She doesn't fucking have to, you know, depend on someone else to save her or plot armor. Padme was is a strong character. She is, honestly. She's just like, you know, her daughter, you know, Leia. She is a strong woman. She's a leader, a good leader, even though I do find it... A little ridiculous that a 14-year-old girl somehow managed to outsmart, you know, the Trade Federation. I'll let that slide. I mean, a 9-year-old blew up a fucking Trade Federation ship. And, of course, I'm probably be called a hypocrite because Ray's a Mary Sue. But how, why is not Anakin in this movie a Mary Sue? He's, or Gary Sue, he's not. He made tons of mistakes that almost got him killed throughout various parts of the movie. So now he's not. Now back to Padme. I think she is a great character in my opinion. And just because she isn't powerful like Rey is doesn't mean that she isn't a strong woman. It's it makes sense why Leia is such a strong leader. She gets that from Padme. And I will say this, she is a good character. She's nowhere near as bad as, as fans say she is. And unfortunately, she isn't given as much time to shine in expanded universe material like Leia has. So that's why Leia is far... She's a better character, I, I will admit, than Padme. Because, of course, a lot of it has to do with direction. But I'll get to that when I get to episode three. In general... I give this movie a 4 out of 5 stars. It's not a bad film. It's not great. But I don't think it deserves the hate that it's gotten over the years. Is it perfect? Far from perfect. Is it objectively a bad movie? No. If Pickett was as nitpicky and objective about the originals as he is of the prequels, Episode 1... Would, would it objectively be better than the, than the original trilogy in a lot of areas? Like episode four. You could pick that movie apart like No Tomorrow. It could, but the original trilogy of fanboys are hypocrites and won't look in the mirror that the prequels, they have their strengths just like the originals and also their weaknesses. This video has gone on long enough, but I feel like... You know, I think I gave my defense of episode one and review. It's a good movie, in my opinion. 
and it stands completely on its own, and unlike the sequels, it doesn't need books and comics to explain its story. This is Darsonovia. May the Force be with you, and stay tuned for Attack of the Clones, which, in my opinion, is the worst Star Wars movie before the sequels were a thing. Later.